Hello YouTube blade lovers. This old sword is with you today for a brief survey of what I'm calling fixed blade pocket knives. You heard me right. Fixed blade pocket knives. We think of a pocket knife as something that folds, going back to the old days of the slip joints and whatnot. Case knives and the knives that you're Granddaddy or great-granddaddy might have used. Maybe your daddy used. Depends on your age, right? I've assembled six knives here that qualify or nearly qualify as a knife that's going to, with its sheath, slip into your pocket in place of using, or maybe in addition to using, a folding knife. Because... Many times with folding knives, even with deep carry clips, the clip is kind of a telltale, less than discreet. In some cases, screams out, hey, there's a knife in my pocket. Whereas at least, um, I would say, three of these should drop down even with the top of your pocket, depending upon what you're wearing, whether you're wearing jeans or you're wearing uh, some sort of uh, fatigue pants or a 511 pants or what have you. So work pants, Carhartt, don't want to go through all the brands, right? So we're going to take these one at a time and kind of examine them along the lines of what is their blade steel. I'm not going to go through measurements other than length, overall length, and we're going to do overall length with a sheath. And we're going to do weight. But the whole idea here is what is convenient and what is easy to carry, what's not going to make a big bulge in your pocket, what's going to be comfortable to carry as an EDC. So um, I'm going to pull everything away here, hopefully out of frame. And if not, disregard. And we're going to start off with perhaps my favorite. This is the Spyderco. I believe it's the Street Beat. There were two versions of this knife. There was the Street Bowie and there was the Street Beat. And um, just to stay honest, I am going to look it up as I'm talking. Street Beat. So, yep, the Street Beat is the smaller of the two. And I believe the other one's called the Street Bowie. It is a design by the famous Fred Perrin of France. He is probably one of the smartest designers for EDC and tactical knives that there is. You know, his knives are notably not fancy. This is probably the fanciest you'll see because it's made by a known manufacturer. Um, Fred has knives made from other sources as well. Some are as simple as just a 440C steel and there's nothing wrong with 440C. You know it's going to have a hard time rusting in your pocket. So this one happens to be VG10 made in Japan. It's um, a couple years old I think the new ones are still being made in Japan. Got a three and a half inch blade as far as I know. It's got a very comfortable, almost scalpel-like molded Zytel handle. Doesn't need to be fancy, doesn't need to be G10. And one thing that Fred, Fred does is rather than create guards and other things that hold the knife securely in hand, he usually uses this deep choil for the first finger which forms a guard and there you have it you've got a little bit of space there a ricasso area uh, no sharpening choil but um, you know if you're EDCing this you'll eventually need to sharpen it and it's not difficult to sharpen it on a spiderco triangle sharp maker um, on a strop what have you it is a Let's go through our measurements, but let's do our measurements 
with the sheath. This sheath did come with, I think, one of those plastic belt loops. Took it off right away because they don't care for those. Tech lock is great if you wanted to put it on your belt. But the nice thing about the sheath is that it thumbs right off. So you can have this in your pocket like that. Thumb off the sheath, pull it right out of your pocket. You're already nothing to open, right? So we got a little extra on the sheath. It's going to make it longer. I got eight and a quarter inches. All right. And that is the Spyderco Street Beat. Not going to say too much more about it, but again, it's one of my favorites. And I did say I was going to give you weight. So before I get too hasty and rush off, I think the weight's going to be important with the sheath. So back on goes the sheath. And we got 4.3 ounces. Which is not a bad weight for a small fixed blade knife. Folders that are that weight are considered to be under the 5 ounce so-called imaginary limit. Let me bring in another one that is a newer acquisition. This is by Kaiser of all companies. You think of Kaiser as being a folding knife company, manufacturer. And this is the Harpoon designed by Maverick Customs. And it is in D2. The interesting thing is I got it from Blade HQ and they advertise it as 1095, but they must have made a switch. I let Blade HQ know about it just so they could change their advertising. It's got a very nice variegated color um, sculpted G10 handle. And it has a um, coated blade. I'm not sure what the coating is, whether it's uh, a titanium nitride or something like that. It is also an extremely comfortable blade. Fills the hand, a little bit left over. I wouldn't really call it a pommel that you could use. Perhaps you could. Uh, what makes the harpoon out of the blade is really just a large cutout for the thumb. Uh, we don't have any jimping there. Did we have jimping on the street beat? Yes, we had some very significant jimping, which I think is extremely effective if you're going to be working with a knife. And what do we got for a length in the sheath for this guy? And speaking of the sheath, this is uh, takes a while to break in. If it takes much longer, I think I'm just going to take the heat gun to it and ease it up just a little bit. So we've got here an overall length of 8 inches. So we had just a teeny bit more on the street beat. This comes with the double belt loop so you can wear it horizontally. You can also take the lower belt loop off by unscrewing that and use this belt loop to come up under your belt and wear it kind of uh, an appendix carry or whatnot. I noticed with the strap material, it's some sort of fiberglass, and some of the uh, fibers were sticking out the side there. I stuck my finger twice on them. So what I may do with that is just uh, take it to a, uh, a lighter and melt it out with a flame. So that is the Kaiser... Maverick Harpoon. Next we have the Cricket Obake. Japanese influenced knife. And um, this is a Burnley design. You may be familiar with it. And they used a titanium nitride etching on here to give kind of a weird almost Damascus look to it. But that's just a coating. One thing I have to say about this, we have a very aggressive blade right out of the box. It's a, a biting kind of blade, and I like that because um, I don't want my cuts sliding. It also has a very nice cord-wrapped handle that I believe 
is then dipped or coated in an epoxy. And this thing ain't going nowhere. And as far as knives without any choils or guards go, I know um, James Williams is making a series of his own knives now. He used to make them for cricket or design them for cricket. And um, he uses cord wrapping on a lot of his. His are going for, you know, upwards of $250, $300, $350. This thing, I think, is now somewhere around 60 which is kind of hard to believe. I think I picked this up for like 40 at the Army-Navy store a few years ago. But um, fake ray skin underneath doesn't have to be real, right? Looks the part, though. But very grippy. Uh, difficult for your hand to slide on that, whether it's wet conditions or dry conditions. So let's see what we got. And worth mentioning here that the sheath is designed, yes, to be used as um, a neck knife, if you wish. But another way to use it is to thread your belt through the loop. Put the knife in your pocket, and it acts as kind of a tension cord, static cord. So... Let me back out a little bit. So if this is firmly attached to your belt, the knife comes out loose, and then the sheath snaps off. So pretty neat. Uh, kind of like a wave feature, if you will, for a fixed blade knife. So we've got an overall of eight and a quarter on the Obaki. All these guys are easy to look up to, but um, that overall length of the knife alone is closer to a seven and a quarter. So we got about an inch of sheath. We've got three and a half inches of uh, three and three eighths cutting edge, three and a half inch blade. Most of these are going to be around that range. And let's move on. So we don't have a half hour video. Of course, these days you can always skip around, right? So we have a slightly longer and larger Ostop Hell designed real steel fixed blade and the name escapes me. Hang on. Should know it. Of course, it's the Metamorph. Morphed out of my mind. <laughs> oh, things you lose with age. But you gain a few things, too. Long history, like a book. As long as you remember it, right? Okay, so we've got the um, Metamorph fixed blade. You're probably familiar with the folding knife. This is uh, considerably longer and one of my longer knives I'm showing today. Comes with this Kydex sheath. So these are all Kydex. They're all, I'd say, very decent Kydex sheaths. Some Kydex can be a little on the flimsy side. Overall is nine inches. So this is by three quarters of an inch the longest one I'm showing today, I believe. Comes with the neck cord. And you could uh, conceivably do the same thing with this cord as a static cord that I did with the um, uh, Obaki. And what does this guy weigh? If I miss any weights, I'll make sure I put them in the posting later on. Zeroed out. Yeah, 4.28, so not too heavy. It is a thinner knife, meaning it isn't very tall. You know, if we put it up against something like the street beat, this is a very narrow knife. Handles well. Got some good... Um, not jimping, but texturing on a G10 handle. Nicely made. I mean, it's a beautiful design. As far as a good-looking knife, it's probably the best of the lot. Um, lots of room for your handle, or hand, on the handle. 
jimping. Little notch here, which I think is sort of one of his trademarks, doesn't have a real purpose. Got jimping underneath here. Got a, a slightest little bit of a finger choil there. It holds well. I mean, uh, feels good in the hand. Got uh, about an inch or so left over on the end. And that is the, oh, and what's the steel on this? 14C28. 14C28. Sandvik, AKA Sandvik. So here's an odd one. And this will be my second to the last. This is the Topps Poker. I had done a review of this as a karambit style knife along with um, one of the um, Bastion Cove knives from Bastionelli Knives, the Mako. And uh, this is relatively new. It's an under $100 knife. Uh, can be held in a conventional fashion. Very short, very compact, Warncliffe style blade with kind of a rounded nose, which is interesting. Still has got, as the name says, still has got pokiness to it. This is 1095 tool steel, I believe, as are many, if not, you know, many of the Topps knives. And um, pretty good blade stock. Um, looks to be about um, just under four millimeters. Plenty of, plenty of meat. You can use it with your pinky through the ring. Back off a little here. And of course, it can be used in the traditional karambit position, although you have no hook to the blade. You have a straight jabbing point down style blade, although the edge is out, which is fine. There's ways to adapt movement to the edge out position. With a sheath, we've got tip to tail. We've got just under eight inches, seven and three quarter inches. Weight. We've got with the sheath. 3.69, so we'll call it 3.7, the lightest of the bunch. When you start putting holes in things, it gets lighter. <laughs> nice sheath. Not entirely difficult to get out. Most Kydex sheaths need to break in a little bit. It's like that Maverick. It's going to take a little breaking in. Otherwise, you very carefully warm them up with a heat gun or... I wouldn't put it in an oven, not just selectively warm up the area. You need to expand, gently expand it, put the knife in, put a glove on your hand or whatever, and gently kind of squeeze it. That's one way. There are many ways. If you make your own kydex sheaths, you don't need to take any lessons on it. Has a horizontal strap, which can be detached and used in a uh, through the belt to inside waistband carry if you want. So very adaptable, very flexible, the Topps Poker. Last but not least, we have a Bastinelli knife. We have the red version 2, is what he calls it. And I forget for the moment what our period E part, period D stands for. But uh, it's a nicely balanced knife, a little on the longer side, this is going to stick out of your pocket a little bit depending upon the depth of your pocket, or it may not. It has a very nicely sort of pseudo Tonto-ish shaped double grind with a swedge at the top. It is um, N690 steel from Italy. These are made by either Fox or uh, Lion Steel usually for the Bastinelli knives. And um, I got to say, you know, his designs are just fantastic. As far as tactical knives go, he, he knows what he's doing with regards to it, and he knows how to use them as well. If you've watched his Instagram uh, page or his YouTube movies or what have you. 
The uh, sheath on this is a little on the thin side. Sorry for bumping the camera. And um, it's serviceable, but it is not as robust as the other sheaths. It came quite loose. There's not a lot of, problem is here, there's not a lot of material being held. I mean, this sheath could possibly be a little higher. I think what he wanted was for you to be able to put your index finger in and thumb it off. And that it does. But, um, I mean, will it fall out? I think with a hard jar, it might. Um, so what I did with this one was reverse what I'm going to do with the Maverick, is I tightened that sheath up a little bit, but it's still not quite tight enough for me. If I like the knife well enough to carry it, I would uh, either make or have made a, uh, have someone make me a Kydex sheath. Let's look at the specs. Overall, we have nine inches. So yeah, one of the longer ones. Not quite as long as the Metamorph. And the weight, we have with the sheath, 5.6. So it's a bigger knife. It may or may not be skeletonized under the handles. Got some nice detail. I like the way they etch the, uh, the blade steel in. So this one, yeah, is made by Fox in Italy. Nice rounded um, spine on this all the way through the handle even though the scales don't meet with the top of the handle they're not flush you got plenty of jimping here and a long run of it here which is very nice your thumb's not going to slip on it it's a useful aggressive not overly aggressive jimping I'd say it's near perfect. Again, you've got it on the top at the butt and you've got it near the butt on the bottom. So it hangs on to you. A very good secure feeling. If you want to call it a boot knife, I'm calling them pocket fixed blades. So that's the Bastinelli. So uh, let's bring them all out for a round of applause here if we can fit them and I don't need to stack them is that gonna fit and yeah, we'll tuck the poker over on the side what the hey there you go so there's a roundup of six pocketable fixed blade knives I hope you enjoyed this. If you do, please give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. This old blade signing out.